OK, so we're going to see how the angle sum and difference formulae for sine can arise naturally as a consequence of Ptolemy's theorem. So Ptolemy's theorem tells you that if you've got a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD, then the side lengths and also the lengths of the diagonals AC and BD satisfy this equation. So with the correct geometric setup, we can actually quite easily show that the angle sum formula for sine holds. So the setup that we need is that, first of all, AC goes through the centre, so this is a diameter of the circle. And we're also going to choose this so that length of the diameter is 1. So we've got our angles theta and phi that we're interested in here. So we're going to try and prove the sine theta plus phi identity. And we've also got this set up so that this is the diameter, which means that the angle at B here is going to be a right angle. And similarly, your angle down at D here is also going to be a right angle. So this turns out to be really useful because now your triangle ABC is actually a right angle triangle where we know one of the angles and we also know that the length of the hypotenuse is going to be 1. So if I just copy out this triangle, I've flipped the orientation of this, but this is fine. So you've got C, B with the right angle and A there, just to make it a bit easier to read off what all of the side lengths are. So if we've got theta here, then the length of AB is just going to be sine theta, and the length of BC is going to be cos theta. And we can draw something very similar for our triangle ACD as well, which will tell us some more of our lengths that we're interested in. So if you've got C, D, and A here, our angle phi here, we know the hypotenuse, the diameter is just 1, we've got a right angle, so we've got sine of phi is the length AD, and cos phi is the length CD down there. So now we can just plug all of the lengths that we know into Ptolemy's theorem. Let's see what this gives us. So first of all, AC we know is just 1, and then the length of BD, we don't actually know what that is yet, so all we'll do is just leave that as BD. Then this is equal to AB times CD, so we know AB is sine theta, and we know that CD is cos phi. Then we've got BC times AD, so we know that the length of BC is cos theta, and we've seen that the length of AD is sine phi. So all that really remains now is to show that the length of BD is indeed sine theta plus phi. And to find the length of BD, we're going to be interested in this triangle OBD, where O is just the centre of our circle. And there are two slightly different scenarios depending if the centre lies inside the triangle BCD or not. So in this first scenario, if I just copy this drawing out, we can actually work out the angle formed at O using one of our classic circle theorems. So you know that if this angle here is going to be theta plus phi, then we know that this angle here is going to be 2 theta plus phi. The angle subtended at the centre is double the angle subtended at the circumference, coming from the same two points. So this gives us one of the angles in the triangle OBD. So what about this scenario where O doesn't lie within the triangle? Well, we'll actually have to draw in some extra points. So if we just pick any point over on the other side now, what we're going to do is we know that the angles, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral here and here would sum to 180 degrees. This is another of our circle theorems. So if I shade this one in blue, then the blue angle is just going to be 180 degrees minus theta plus phi then this is quite useful now because it tells us if we draw in the triangle OBD, it tells us then that this angle, which is the one we're going to be interested in, this is actually going to be double the blue angle. So this is going to be 2 times this, or 360 degrees, minus 2 times theta plus phi. Okay, so let's just recap what we've learnt here. Then. So you've got, in either case, your triangle OBD, and remember that OB and OD, these both have length a half, and the length of BD is what we're going to be interested in. And finally, this angle BOD, we know that it's either going to be equal to 2 times theta plus phi, or potentially 360 degrees minus 2 theta plus phi. The final step involves just splitting this triangle in half. So if we split this into two equal halves, you'll end up with two right angle triangles because we've started with an isosceles triangle. And here this angle is going to be either theta plus phi, so half of 2 theta plus phi, or potentially 180 degrees minus theta plus phi. We know that this length is just the radius of the circle, it's a half, and this length here is going to be a half times the length BD, which is the length we're interested in. So now we can use a bit of trigonometry here. 
If we had theta plus phi as our angle, then you'd be able to say that a half sine theta plus phi is going to be a half times the length BD. What's really interesting here is actually sine theta plus phi is going to be the same whether we use theta plus phi or 180 minus theta plus phi. So these two are actually equal to each other, just using symmetry of the sine function there. So actually, either way, we can conclude that a half sine theta plus phi is equal to a half times the length BD. So then we can just read off from the work we've done earlier then, therefore, that sine theta plus phi, this is indeed equal to the length of BD, which we know is equal to sine theta cos phi plus cos theta sine phi. So then we've proven our first angle formula for acute angles theta and phi. But along the way, we've actually got a really useful result here. So with our theta plus phi, we could have just replaced this by any angle, let's call this alpha now. And we could have shown, where we've shown that this length was sine theta plus phi, we could just show for our generic angle alpha, anywhere between zero and 180 degrees, that this corresponding length for our triangle would be sine alpha. So we'll use this now to prove the angle difference formula for sine. And this proof requires a slightly different geometric setup. So now we've got our cyclic quadrilateral so that BC passes through the centre of the circle. And once again, the diameter length of BC is just going to be 1. But now all of our cyclic quadrilateral lies on one side of the diameter. We've got our angles theta and phi in there, just like this. So you can see our angle theta minus phi will be the angle ABD here. So just like before, we'll have some right angles. So this angle BAC will give us a right angle triangle. So if we just copy this triangle out, we've got theta as one of our angles at B. We've got a right angle at A, and C goes up here. And the length of BC is going to be 1, so we can just read off the length of AC. It's going to be sine theta, and the length of BA is going to be cos theta. We can do something very similar for our triangle containing phi. Once again, we've got a right angle at D here. So let's just copy this triangle out. We've got an angle of phi and a right angle at D and here are B and C. And the length of BC is 1, so we have sine phi here, and BD is going to have length cos phi. So if we now substitute all of these lengths into Ptolemy's theorem, let's see what this gives us. So AC times BD, we know AC is sine theta and BD is cos phi, so we know that sine theta times cos phi, this is going to be equal to AB times CD, so AB is cos theta and CD is sine phi. And finally, we need to add BC times AD. So BC is just 1, so now we just need to find the length of AD. And this is where we can actually use our lemma from earlier. So now BDA, this triangle, if we just draw out a copy of this, this has got the length that we're interested in is AD here. And we know that this angle is going to be theta minus phi from the setup we've used. So actually, just using our lemma then, because the radius is a half, the diameter is 1, we know that this length, AD, is going to be sine theta minus phi. So then we can conclude that sine theta minus phi, this is indeed equal to the length AD. So this is equal to, rearranging now, you get sine theta cos phi minus cos theta sine phi, which is our angle subtraction formula for sine.